been listening to the discussion about the crisis in the Doha round negotiations and how to discipline aid for trade between Central African development. One of the first things that comes to mind for me is a meeting I attended three years ago in Monterey, California, where a very knowledgeable lady from Washington described the miracle of what cultural change in Kenya, how rapidly Kenya had grown to account for 60% of all the world's exclusively European Union, 31% of the horticultural products that are bought in Europe. And when she was asked, what is the reason for this, she said, she wasn't quite sure, but maybe it's because of the fact that there is no ministry for horticulture in Kenya. Uh, when I remember that incident, it also occurred to me that there has been a very dramatic change in the economy of Kenya recently. From an economic growth of about 0.6% four years ago, last year Kenya's economy grew by 6%. It's the highest growth rate it has attained in nearly a generation. And when I've been asking myself, what accounts for this? I thought, like the lady in Monterey, maybe it's because last year, Kenya did not factor any donor funds in its budget. The total amount of donor support for the budget in the year 2016 in Kenya was 5% of the total budget, which is the lowest in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, having said that, there's still a number of things that are important. I think I need to draw out the reality that the situation in Africa is not desperate. Africa is emerging. Much of Africa is round the corner. We've gone through some of the darkest period in living memory, the collapse of some brutal dictatorships, genocidal wars in, the, in Rwanda, drawn out skirmishes that have been bloodletting in Southern Sudan, in the Congo, in Burundi, the pain of statelessness in Somalia, but beyond those realities, that to see Africa turning tanks into plowshares, Africa's economies broadly growing together. For the first time in more than 20 years, all the three economies of East African community countries, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, grew by more than 5% at the same time. Now, having said that, it only helps to state that there is a momentum which can be strengthened. It doesn't say Africa can do it alone. It says certain reforms, certain measures necessary for Africa's revival are to be undertaken at home. The war against corruption is critical. Transparency in public procurement is critical. Predictable policies, conditions that are attractive to private investment, both domestic and foreign, infrastructure that makes it possible at a competitive price to access markets. These are areas of investment. Where the challenge is, is where African countries are making the efforts and results are coming. At what point does the rest of the world meet us? Two frontiers are important here. One, in the millennium that is dominated by trade, liberalization around the world, freer movement of goods and services. The challenge is, how can we keep the promise of Doha? How can the creation of an enabling environment in terms of international rules of trade asymmetry in market access be so created as to also facilitate greater participation of African trade. One of the innovative ways of dealing with this question has been the emergence of aid for trade. But to my mind, although aid for trade was not part of the single undertaking in the beginning, aid for trade has made sense under Doha because of the realization that to an bottle the potential of African entrepreneurs to grow their economies requires much more than just opening up markets and creating better rules of market access. It includes addressing supply side constraints, capacity problems, addressing questions of transitional costs from over dependence on customs tariffs, creating conditions of enhancing market awareness through grassroots education among potential producers. These are issues that cannot strictly be addressed in the context of greater, uh, fairer rules of trade. And hence, aid for trade comes in. So those, those of us approaching aid for trade out of the Doha round negotiations are seeing the possibility of addressing matters extraneous to rulemaking that are important to translate trade openings into development aids. But on the other end, you have the issue of